Hello, my name is Bruce Kane, and I'm a senior information developer for the BMC Remedy ITSM suite of applications. I'd like to take a few minutes to show you how records cycle through the archiving process. For the purposes of this video, we'll assume that incident records are archived when their submit date has reached 548 days ago or more. We'll also assume that the archiving process runs every 24 hours and that the export function is run 180 days after our example records were archived. All of these values are configurable and we describe how to do that in the documentation. To illustrate the archiving lifecycle, we'll use a pair of incident requests with the status of closed. If we were using a different record type for this illustration, for example a knowledge article, then the status needed to archive the record would be retired, cancelled, or closed version. Again, this is all laid out in the documentation. So here we have a simple illustration of the environment in which the archiving takes place. Most of the process happens inside the production database, where you have a set of production forms and a corresponding set of archive forms. Here, we see that Incident Request 100 and Incident Request 101 are both closed, but their submit date was 547 days ago so they were not included in today's archive run. But, 24 hours later, their submit date has reached the threshold of 548 days ago, and, because their status is closed, they meet the qualification described by the archiving policy for incident requests. And so, when the archiving process runs, it copies the qualified records, along with their associated forms, from the production data forms to the archive data forms. For incident request records, archived associated forms, or child records, can include reminders, any work logs, impacted areas, and so on. After incident request 100 and 101 were copied to the archive forms, the archiving process deletes them from the production forms. The archived records then remain in the archive forms until the records have been in the archive forms long enough for them to be included in the next export. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, in this example, we're assuming a retention policy that allows archived incident requests to be exported 180 days after they were archived. When you run the export process, incident requests that in this example are 180 days old or older can be removed from the database. The purpose of exporting data is to help you manage the size of your database by giving you the option of removing aged records. You run the export manually from the Archive Manager console, and you have some choices about what happens to the records when they're exported. You can tell the export function to write the qualified archived records to a series of CSV files, one for each archive form, and then have the export function delete the qualified records from the archive forms. If you have no need to retain your records after they are removed from the production database, you can tell the export to just delete them from the archive forms. Another choice is to have the export write the records to a series of CSV files while leaving the qualified records in the archive. This last option gives you the ability to create an offline copy of the archive or a subset of the archive for analysis or other purposes without also removing records from the archive. I hope this video has given you a clear idea of how records cycle through the archiving process and what happens to them as they do. For more information about the archiving process, you can refer to the rest of the topics in the online documentation. Thanks for watching.